I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on quadrilaterals. There was a question from one of our subscribers who wanted to understand how do you verify that the given vertices represent a square. So based on his request, I have made two questions here. I hope you will find them interesting. Question number one, explain how you can verify without finding length of each side that the given coordinates are the vertices of a square. The coordinates are a 4 5, b 6 1, 2 minus 1 and d 0 3. Right. So without finding the length of each side, you have to figure out that these coordinates represent a square. Okay. Question number 2. Use your method to verify that the following points use your method. I should write use your above method. So you'll, have, you'll come up with a method here, right? Use your above method to verify that the following points do not represent a square. They represent something else. Perfect. So these are your questions. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Okay. Now let's first talk about what a square is, and then we will work out a scheme to verify that this is these points represent a square. So if I have a square, first thing which you all know is that all sides are equal. Perfect. Now I am saying without finding the length of each side. So we know all sides are equal, but that is not how we will verify. So I made this question complicated. We also know that these are all at right angles. We can use this. What else do you know? That is key to get the answer. So we'll begin with at least what we are referring to. That is to say, that the slopes are negative reciprocal, right? So lines are perpendicular. So we need to figure out that are the lines perpendicular, right? So we say lines are, we have two pairs of parallels, right? So parallel and they are also perpendicular. Now, if they are parallel, now when we say that lines are parallel, it means what? It means that the slope m1 is equal to m2, right? So slopes are equal. That's what it means, right? When we say that the lines are perpendicular, in that case, it means what? It means that they are negative reciprocal, right? So, so let's call this as m1 and m3, let's say minus 1 over m3. So they are negative reciprocal, right? So that is what we are trying to see, right? Okay. So let us write down the points given to us in some order. So let me write then the points as uh, in any particular order, but we have to go like a, b, c, d, right? So let's begin from here. Let's say this point is a, which is 4, 5. And then we have this as b, which is 6, 1. This point is C, which is 2 minus 1, and this point is D, which is 0, 3. Right, so we have gone in a particular order, right? You could go clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter. You don't really have to use a graph paper to plot, that's what I'm trying to say. So first, let's prove that these two lines are parallel. That is to say that AB is parallel to dc right so let's try to prove that how can you prove we have to find their slope to prove it right so we have to find their slope so let's calculate the slope between these two lines a b and c d slope means let's say slope m which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so for these lines, the slope is going to be, we are saying a to b. So 1 minus 5, 1 minus 5, divided by 6 minus 4, 6 minus 4, correct? So that gives you minus 4, 
divided by 2 or minus 2. Clear? So that becomes the slope of ABDC. AB, right? Now let's find the slope of DC. This is slope of AB. Now let's find slope M of D to C. Slope of D to C will be minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 minus 3 divided by 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0. That gives you minus 4 divided by 2 which is again minus 2. So you see here that the slope of AB is equal to slope of DC. That means they are parallel. Okay? So we have got one part of it. Now let us check AD should be perpendicular to AB. That is perpendicular lines. If I say these two are perpendicular, that means they are parallel also. Does it make sense to you? Okay. So let's now prove that we have perpendicular lines. So we'll now find the slope of A to D, right? Slope of A to D, A to D is what? 3 minus 5. Let me write down here. 3 minus 5 over 0 minus 4, 0 minus 4, correct? That gives you minus 2 over minus 4 or is equal to half. Now, do you see that half is negative reciprocal of these two slopes, right? So, it is perpendicular, right? So, from here, we know that AD, from here we can write AD is perpendicular to both these lines because they are parallel right to line a b right so we got this part perfect similarly let us uh, since i have very less space i'm using different colors to to just use the space better we'll find slope b c now slope of b to c slope of b to c will be so we have 1 minus minus 1, so 1 minus minus 1 divided by 6 minus 2, 6 minus 2. So that becomes plus 2 and this becomes 4, which is also half. So you have shown that that is also negative reciprocal, correct? So we have shown that BC is also perpendicular to AC, but these two are parallel, right? So we have also shown that these two are parallel. Does it make sense? So what we have got here is that the opposite sides are parallel and adjacent are perpendicular. So perpendicular lines are adjacent and parallel lines are opposite. So we have done that much. So that means we have verified that all these angles are 90 degrees. These two sides are parallel and the other two sides are also parallel. Now, how do we justify that it is a square? It could be a rectangle, correct? How do we justify? The only way now to do it is check the slope of diagonals. So if I check the slope of these two diagonals, then in case of a square, they are at right angles. That is the key to check the result. Correct? So we are going to now find the slope of diagonal A to C. A to C, right? So my, we could do 5 minus 1, right? So we do 5 minus of minus 1 and 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2. So that gives you 6 over 2, that is 3. So this slope is 3 for us, right? We did 5 minus minus 1, which is 6. 4 minus 2, which is 2. So, of course, they are not oriented correctly, but gives you positive 3. Now, let's find D to B. D to B is how much? So, we'll do 1 minus 3, 1 minus 3, difference of Y values, and 6 minus 0, 6 minus 0. So, that gives you minus 2 over 6, right, which is minus 1 over 3. So, do you see that they are negative reciprocal? 3 and minus 1 over 3. So from here, you can easily show that the line A to C, that diagonal, is perpendicular to diagonal DB. 
since they are perpendicular it is a square so for square it is important to understand we found that all sides opposite sides are parallel adjacent sides are perpendicular diagonals are at right angles do you see that so we verify that this is a square now you could use distance formula and verify further correct so distance formula i'll give you but i'm not going to use it distance is x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square square root so you'll notice that all sides distances are exactly same and it is a square is that okay so that is the strategy to prove that a given quadrilateral is a square without even finding the length of each side it does make sense to you perfect now your question is question number two we have similar points here you have to verify that these points do not represent a square you could figure out what does it represent right so here is my solution to question number two i hope you have already got the result so just let me just sketch some figure here we are we are not sure whether it's a square or not i'm just sketching a figure which is not a square your method to verify that the following points do not represent a square so not a square so i'm just writing the points again so we'll write a as 4 5 b as 6 1 c as minus 4 1 and d as minus 2 minus 3 correct now to verify that this is not a square one way was we could just check the diagonal we could do that and we can say that our diagonal is not at right angle so we'll do a shortcut method now so we'll say what is the slope of a to c slope of a to c is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is equal to 1 minus 5 over minus 4 minus 4 correct so that gives me minus 4 over minus 8 or is equal to 2 so this slope is 2 let's find the slope of d to b so slope of d to b is equal to 1 minus minus 3 divided by 6 minus minus 2 which is 1 plus 3 is 4 and 6 plus 2 is 8 which is equal to half not negative half do you see that it is half but not negative half so what we see here is that product of this this is another way we could write of these two is what is two times half which is one right they are not perpendicular since m1 times m2 is not equal to minus one correct if they are perpendicular then their product should have been minus one we got one so they are not perpendicular therefore the figure which is a quadrilateral will not represent a square it does make sense to you well you can verify that given these points the opposite sides are parallel so I have taken points where the opposite sides are parallel actually and also these two sides are so you should verify that and once you do that you can say it is a rectangle perfect so that is how you could do it now that gives rise to question number three question number three is name quadrilaterals in which diagonals bisect and 
are at right angles. Let me remove the word bisect in which the diagonals are at right angles. Okay. Can you name other quadrilaters where diagonals are at right angle? That is your question. So just by checking that diagonals are at right angles, we cannot conclude it is a square, right? So, so the quadrilaters in which diagonals are at right angle could be, there are two answers for this. One is rhombus and the other one is kite. In kite also, they, they are at right angles. They may not bisect, but they are at right angle. So at ro in rhombus, they will bisect. In kite, they will not bisect. Correct? So that is how you could differentiate all these quadrilaterals from their properties. I hope that summarizes a lot about characteristics of quadrilaterals. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.